Needed the running shoes for this one. The Mustangs 4-0, averaging 55 points and 560 yards per game. The Wildcats are 3-1, shutting out Friona last time out, 21-0. The Red Raiders have been tested on the road before this season. Tech had to go to SMU for the season opener and won. Had to go to Kansas on the Jayhawks' homecoming and won. Now on Saturday, Tech will try and wreck another homecoming for an opponent as the Red Raiders make their longest road trip of the season to Morgantown, West Virginia. After snapping a 35-year playoff drought, Lubbock High opening the season with a pair of setbacks while the Pirates of Cooper are even at one apiece. For most of us, the weekend starts at the end of the day on Friday, but for football fans, it starts on Thursday nights. And not a bad game last night in the NFL. Friendship coming off a thrilling double overtime win last week against EP El Dorado. The Sandys in the meantime 2-1, and one, suffering a one-point loss at home against Ryder last week. A chip-on-the-shoulder mentality may be one way to describe Texas Tech entering this season because the Red Raiders feel there's a lot of unfinished business out on the gridiron. It's not like college football. I mean, it's a very physical game. It can't even be compared to the usual style of football seen on Friday nights at area high schools. It's just a faster paced game. I mean, you got to keep your head on the swivel. They play on an 80 yard field and the final score looks more like a basketball score than one usually turned in on the gridiron. But the biggest difference, there are only six men on either side of the ball. The six man game, to me, I feel like is a is a very dangerous game. It's it's more like a, a kickoff or a punt return breaking out every play. With that style, it's not a surprise to see final scores like 122 to 88 or even 98 to 54. There's a lot more scoring, but. I mean, football is still football. One of the biggest differences between six-man and 11-man football is on the defensive side of the ball because if you miss your tackle, it will most likely end up as six points on the scoreboard for the other team. In 11-man, you've got guys behind you, so if you miss a tackle, you've got somebody behind you. In six-man, if you miss the tackle, there may not be anybody else behind you. So everyone has to do their job and make sure that they're taking care of their business. With the combination of high scoring and exciting plays, there's no surprise the game is becoming more and more popular with each snap of the ball. I think you're going to con continue to see it grow in this part of the country and throughout the state of Texas. Reporting for Fox 34 Sports, I'm Joshua Cook. For nine months, all the Red Raiders have been able to do is wait. Wait to right the wrongs from 2011. This building was more disappointed with what, the way we finished off last year than anyone else, so we put in some real good work throughout the spring and the summer, so we're ready to hit the ground running and, and uh, make up for um, our disappointments last year. Wait for the chance of redemption in 2012. We have a lot of work to do, um, but we have a lot of time, so um, I'm excited about practice and ready to get going. The wait is finally over. Sunday, the Red Raiders reported for fall camp. And basically, this, all, this is what we've been working for this whole, all through winter condition, all through summer condition. So, you know, everybody's excited, you know, everybody's ready to go. Um, he's ready, really ready to get back out there on that field. A chip on the shoulder mentality may be one way to describe Texas Tech entering this season because the Red Raiders feel there's a lot of unfinished business out on the gridiron. I think we have a ton of motivation over the summer just for the fact that we had a losing season and we were that team that, that, broke, that broke the bowl streak and uh, but that just gives us a little more. That's exactly where we want to be. We didn't expect anything higher. Um, we feel like we, we are underrated, but we'll have to prove it on Saturdays. Tech has 17 practices in fall camp to work out the kinks and get ready for the first week of game prep for the season opener on September 1st against Northwestern State. And every practice along the way will be crucial towards success in 2012. Like I said, we're ready to uh, translate all that stuff that we did there in the summer, all the hard work we put in and, and put it into fall camp and get ready to put ourselves in a position to win a Big 12 championship. Reporting for Fox 34 Sports, I'm Joshua Cook. You're watching Fox 34 News Now. Welcome into Fox 34 News Now Sports, everyone. I'm Joshua Cook. The Red Raiders have been tested on the road before this season. Tech had to go to SMU for the season opener and won. Had to go to Kansas on the Jayhawks' homecoming and won. Now on Saturday, Tech will try and wreck another homecoming for an opponent as the Red Raiders make their longest road trip of the season to Morgantown, West Virginia. Tech and West Virginia will meet for the second time as Big 12 foes tomorrow. The Red Raiders upending then number five WVU last season at the Jones 49 to 14.
now traveling all the way up to Morgantown for their second 11 a.m. game of the season. The head coach says it's just another business trip for them. To us, it's a road game. We'll have to leave a little bit earlier for the longer flight, but we're going to, you know, we'll keep our routine the exact same and we'll go to the hotel and then wake up early and go play the game. So I don't think, I think our kids will be more excited than anything. Most of them probably have never been to West Virginia in their lives and they say the stadium's unbelievable, the fans are unbelievable, and so it'll be a, it'll be a great atmosphere for all of us to experience. Of course, the Mountaineers are coming off a bye week after getting walloped by Baylor two weeks ago down in Waco. So what do the Red Raiders expect out of West Virginia on Saturday? The biggest deal you watch their film is how multiple they are. Um, they're playing with a lot of confidence. You know, I know they had a rough night in Waco, but aside from that, they played really good defense. They turned people over, lots of negative plays wreaking havoc, and you never know where they're going to line up. Week in, week out, it looks like a completely different team as far as schemes go. So that, that obviously is, is a challenge for a young quarterback. Expect West Virginia to be West Virginia, spread us out, try to get around the edges, play fast, tempo us a little bit, see how, test our conditioning and see how, how uh, fundamentally sound we are. The Texas Tech College Rodeo kicked off last night and additional performances will be going on throughout the day both today and tomorrow to help get you in the rodeo spirit. We bring you today's Rodeo Minute. I'm Levin Porter. I'm from Fort Stockton, Texas. I'm a senior here at Texas Tech and an animal science business option major. I'm a header in the team roping event and probably the most important aspect of my game is my mental game. It takes a lot of stability and foundation in my mind and in my horse's mind and confidence between the both of us. Another part of my mental game is knowing my draw having uh, a knowledge base of what to expect from my steer and my partner and I will discuss that so that we have a good good foundation to run from. For most of us, the weekend starts at the end of the day on Friday, but for football fans, it starts on Thursday nights. And not a bad game last night in the NFL. Pete Carroll and the Seahawks look to go 6-0 for the first time in franchise history. Seattle only up by four in the third quarter, up 17-13. Russell Wilson will fix that. Off play action rolls out, hits Kellen Davis in the back of the end zone. Seahawks up 24-13. Later in the third, Carson Palmer trying to bring the cards back, but throws off his back foot and is picked off by Brandon Browner. Browner is going to make an attempt at the infamous pick six. Will he make it? No, he trips up at the five. And that would set up the beast. Everyone's favorite fantasy football running back, Marshawn Lynch, runs it in for the touchdown. And the Seahawks go on to win this one, 34-22. Now from the gridiron to the diamond, Bo Sox and Tigers game five of the ALCS last night. Tied at two piece, top two Boston's Mike Napoli hammering that Annabelle Sanchez pitch to center field. And that ball will land in the greenery. With that, Napoli has long balls in the last two games. Red Sox up 1-0. Bottom seven, Tigers were down four to nothing at one point, trying to rally back. Miguel Cabrera grounds into a double play. Jose Iglesias scores and makes it 4-3. Tigers fans on the edge of their seats. Iglesias jam shot there in the ninth, and that would do it. Koji Uehara gets another save, five out save to be exact. The Red Sox win. Boston is now one win away from returning to the World Series for the first time since 2007. Keeping it with baseball now, on Thursday, Nolan Ryan announced he would be stepping down as the CEO of the Texas Rangers, effective October 31st. Ryan has been with the Rangers since 2008 in that role and says he is ready for retirement, but rumors are that he could join up with the Astros in some front office role, considering his ties to that organization. But the Ryan Express saying he really doesn't know right now what his future in baseball might be. Well, I think there's a lot of speculation on that because of Reed's involvement in the Astros and my history with the Astros. But uh, sitting here today, uh, that's not in my plans. I'm planning on uh, uh, going home and just kind of uh, enjoy uh, getting back out the ranch and doing things that uh, I haven't done for six years now and, and uh, spend time with my grandkids and my family. And, and uh, uh, but I'm not going to sit here today and tell you that uh, I don't know what a year from now might bring. And, and uh, 
um, this may be the final chapter of my baseball career. What a baseball career would be for the Ryan Express. Now time for the Fox 34 News Now Sports Play of the Day. Tar Heels and the number 10 Canes last night. UNC up 7-6 to six in the second quarter until North Carolina's Thomas Moore has his field goal blocked by Miami's R.D. Burns. It goes right to Ladarius Gunter, who returns it 67 yards for the touchdown. Miami would survive 27-23 to 23 to remain undefeated, and this play was a big part of it. So the Miami Special Teams gets our Fox 34 News Now Sports Play of the Day. Nothing like a blocked field goal to help win that game. Well, that does it for Fox 34 News Now Sports for Friday, October 18th. For more sports news and highlights, be sure to catch Rob Verby tonight on the News at 9. Have a great weekend, everybody. You're watching Fox 34 News Now.